Hello everybody, in today's new old video, we are going to be talking about the Fire Staff and Abyss combo. This was a very famous combo from the Season 3 patch, and now it is making a return for Season 4. Fire Staff is in such a great spot in the PvP meta currently, and comboing it with the Abyss provides so much more damage and mobility. So with that being said, let's talk about the best in slot gear, attributes, and skills to run for Season 4. Starting off with the Fire Staff tree, we have a standard Pillar of Fire, Fireball, and Burnout skill tree. We need to make sure that we take most of the passives on the left side of the Fire Staff tree so we can open up the Runes of Helios. And for the Great Axe tree, we are using Charge, Reap, and Execute. The reason we take Execute in this build is because we run Crippling Reap on the Great Axe. We can pretty much guarantee ourselves a free 200% weapon damage that does get increased to 250% weapon damage when hitting a target below 50% health. And if they are below 30% health, we get a 100% critical chance with this ability. We do also take a Bloodlust in this build to run 20% faster when chasing targets, and it just generally helps to do 15% more damage for free. For the gear, I always preach about how you do not need best in slot in this game, so I am going to show you the gear that I use from top to bottom, and then we will show you what is actually best in slot on the website version of this build. So starting off with the helmet, we are using health, shirking heals, and refreshing. Shirking heals is going to be a big part of this build, and is what is going to allow us to do so many crazy plays. We do want to run Featherweight with this build because the Fire Staff and Abyss does not need more damage from any other artifact like Tumblr's Foot Wraps. And for the Light Gloves, we just have something simple with Empowering Fireball. We have some more Shirking Heels Legs, Feet, and this is the Fire Staff that I am currently using, but it is nothing best in slot. The main perk that we do want is going to be Alacritus Punishment, and instead of Keely Jagged for the proc, we want to have Plagued Crits. Here is my Abyss, and once again, we talked about Crippling Reap. The reason we take Crippling reap is because it is going to slow whoever we target with this ability by 50% for four seconds. The slow cap in this game is also 50%, so we pretty much slow cap any target that we hit with this ability. And for the heart rune, there is nothing better than stalwart heart rune of stone form. It simply provides us just so much more healing and survivability in this build. And for the amulet, I am personally using Tangle Vine with Champion's Ring and also Endless Thirst. These are the attributes that I opt to take in this build, but there is more options that we can choose from and depending on your play style we can actually increase our constitution to 200 to make ourselves a little bit tankier and that is also going to boost our shirking heels proc to survive a little longer so now moving to the actual best in slot guide let's talk about the attributes that you can run with the rest of the best in slot gear so unfortunately in this build we do have a lot of magnify because the frigid dawn gear that is best in slot for opr and 3v3s does come with 32 magnify on top of the magnify from featherweights the magnify from our amulets, the magnify from our earring, and the magnify from our abyss, we are at a total of six magnify. So that means that we only have two attribute options that we can run. So one of the attribute options that we can run is going to be the 200 con 400 int variants. If you try to put any more points out of intellect into strength or dex, you are not going to be able to with six magnify. If you wanted a little bit more damage on your abyss and fire staff, you could also drop your con constitution to 150 and then bump your strength up to 50 strength. At 25 strength, you get 5% light attack damage and at 50 strength, you get 10% heavy attack damage. Both of these modifiers apply to both your great axe and your fire staff and do actually increase your damage quite a bit. However, with the state of OPR right now with all of this burst damage and the fact that Abyss and fire staff does not really need that much more damage, I plan to personally run 200 con 410 intellect and that is what I am going to recommend recommend to you in this build once I get all of my best in slot pieces. Next up, talking about the perks that we are running, once again, we are trying to run 5 Shirky Heals, 4 Elemental Aversion, and 2 Enchanted Ward. The only way we are able to fit 2 Enchanted Ward into this build is by using the Frigid Dawn pieces of armor that you could get from the Glacial Tarn Mutation Dungeon. If you play a lot of Outpost Rush, this is going to be your absolute best in slot gear, and putting Shirking Heals on it is going to fit in every single one of your Outpost Rush builds. Builds. Once again, Shirking Heals is just absolutely massive in this patch for 1vx situations. Even though Plague Crits and Plague Strides is currently meta and does reduce the heal of Shirking Heals, it is still absolutely the best perk to take in this game for small scale PvP. Okay, so let's actually talk about the best in slot gear. The two heavy pieces that we are running today are going to be Heavy Head and Heavy Glove, and these are the Frigid Dawn pieces that come with Enchanted Ward and Elemental Aversion, which are two illegal perk combinations. And once again, 
put shirking heels on them. Put shirking heels on your featherweights. For the other dungeon piece, once again, put shirking heels on it. For the light legs, we have shirking energy, shirking heels, and elemental aversion. If you are trying to go for those high skill clips, then shirking energy is going to be a must. It is about 16 flat stamina every six seconds, which is massive. For the light feet, we want to have shirking heels, elemental aversion, and health. We are using the corrupt progenitor amulets. And for the absolute best in slot ring for this build, we want to have hardy fire damage and mortal empowerments. Mortal empowerment and fire damage on the ring is why we do not run fire harnessing on our gear. Both fire damage and mortal empowerment do count as empower, just like fire harnessing. So if we are able to capitalize on empower elsewhere that is not harnessing on the armor, we can slot more defensive perks. And for the endless thirst, put regenerating on it. And lastly, for the weapons here, the fire staff, your absolute best in slot is going to be alacritous punishment, empowering fireball, and plagued crits. Plagued crits in this meta is absolutely a must. A lot of people are running shirking heals, and healing with Ankh in this game is still absolutely a problem. Your other best in slot fire staff with more consistent damage is going to be alacritous punishment, flame attunement, and plagued crits. This is actually probably better than your fireball staff for more overall consistent damage. The only thing you would have to change is probably your boots here, and instead of health, you would want to put in your fireball perk. And the best way to roll this at the crafting station is going to be rolling it with your scarabs and rolling two perk empowering fireball with shirking heals and either hope for elemental aversion or health as your third perk. And for the abyss, we already talked about putting crippling reap on here and the heart rune is not changing as well. Stalwart heart rune of stone form. Okay, let's talk about how to actually play this build. If you are new to the fire staff, you really need to get the hang of getting your light attacks in between your abilities. This is actually a massive DPS increase as it applies a ton of smolder stacks. Ideally, you really want to be abusing your heavy attacks for the CDR, but if you can get a few light attacks in between you cast your abilities, you are going to see a massive DPS increase. And the same thing applies with your great axe as well. Before you reap, you really want to get in that auto attack before and after because you do just get that free extra weapon damage. And one thing to note as well, your main combo with the abyss is really just going to be the reap into the auto execute. Now you only want to do this combo when they have zero stamina. You also have the auto charge combo. Other than that, there's really nothing else to talk about with this combo. You have your execute, you have your charge to escape, you have your burnout to escape or go in, and it is the fire staff, so it's really not that hard to get the hang of after a few games. Thank you all for watching today's video. If you enjoy the fire staff and abyss combo and have any other tips for the new players trying out this build, make sure you leave it down in the comments below. Now I am going to end this video with some of the fire staff and the abyss gameplay. Once again, thank you so much for watching today's video, and peace, baby. It's looking grim for Ilishar. Give me that hair, boy! Oh, he's got bleed builds. Uh oh. It's easier to fight, though. I kinda like this. Oh, my. I got my shirking proc. Free 1k damage. Erg. Good 
Come here, Rosalie. Sweet. Oh my God, Gong, that was perfectly timed. Maybe you just can't hit your spikes. Might be a, a skill differential, dare I say. And that is one kill. Oh, what? Yo, get off my friend, ho. Ah. Boom. Oh, he dodged. Nice. I'm gonna get up top here, though. That's heavy. That guy. Come here, Cod Man. Burn out again. Nah, this is crazy. This guy needs to die. Woohoo! 